Welcome to Christ the King's Dinner Church for Monday, Thursday. This is a service and a liturgy that is adapted from the liturgy by Adrian White from Sanctified Arts. We're glad that you can join us tonight as we share in this meal and this time of worship together. As we share in this service, there are a few things that you need. One, bread. It may look like this, or it may be some other kind of bread that you're going to enjoy tonight. Number two, you need some kind of celebratory drink. It could be wine or grape juice, or it may be something else that you have plenty of in your home. Number three, you need a sink or a basin and some soap to wash with. And then number four, we need your finest dishware or china that you might have that looks maybe something like this. And so you can adorn your table, much like we have the altar here tonight, adorned for this special meal that we enjoy on this Monday, Thursday. We begin tonight with our call to worship at this table. We invite you to bring your body into the worship of God. You may do this by standing. You could be sitting comfortably. And we'll just start by taking time to listen to our heartbeats and notice the rise and the fall of our chests and abdomens with each breath. Join me in the words that you see on your screen. A call to worship is a call to presence. We, we long, long to, to be, be fully, fully present, present here, here and to and feel, to feel God's, God's presence here. here. Notice the space around us, the way it looks the way it smells, and the way it sounds. With, With all, all our senses, senses we, we recognize, recognize a, a sacred, sacred space and our belonging, belonging in, in it. it. We gather as good creation, wonderfully made. We join, we join our bodies, bodies into, into one, one body, body as, as, we remember, remember life, as we remember the life, death, death and, and resurrection, resurrection of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ. We'll join together in singing our opening hymn tonight, What Wondrous Love Is This?
Our next part is setting the table. In a few minutes, you will hear the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. On that night, Jesus will be betrayed and arrested. It is a story of deep intimacy and sacred connection. It is also a story about human resistance to God's grace and to our discomforts with the ways that Jesus demands the disruption of hierarchies. In this story, Simon Peter first objects to Jesus' plan to wash his feet. Jesus does not rebuke him, but Jesus does insist to wash his feet, for he knows what is to come. As we prepare to lay down our burdens before God in confession, we place our trust in God's desire to know us and to be with us in this space and at this table. As we enter into the sacred story of John's gospel, let us take a few moments to notice our feet and our hands, our table, and those who are gathered around the table. You may want to take off your shoes and feel how they press upon the floor. Or maybe you want to wiggle your fingers or wiggle your toes or maybe even fold your hands together. As you do that, notice the experience and the feeling and the sensation and consider and wonder of God who has made your feet, who has made your hands, and it is God who meets us, not only from on high, but also kneeling at our feet. Take a deep breath. Let that air flow in. God's grace enters and now let it out. Let the things that distract us go away. At this time, I invite you to prepare, to set and to adorn your table for this night. It is around this table that we are gathered for worship. And it is here that this table becomes an altar in our home. At this table, together, we will share and remember the sacred feast that is commanded by Jesus. After the music ends, feel free to press pause to allow time for you to continue to adorn and to set your table.
A reading from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to God. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table. He took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe again, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and your teacher have washed your feet, you ought also wash another's feet. For I have set you on an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Through simple elements and simple acts, Jesus flipped the scripts of power to bring about new possibilities for God's love in the world. Before his betrayal and death, Jesus touched the feet of his followers and sealed their connection to one another. Jesus taught us to wash one another's feet so that we might witness each other's goodness and be made clean. Through the waters of baptism, God claims us as God's own and marks the calling for our lives and for our bodies. This is the baptism that washes away all of our sin together. And we, tonight, will remember our baptisms. But first, let us pray. God, who poured forth water, God, who formed each one of us, we, we give, give you thanks for the sacrament of baptism. baptism. Allow, Allow the, the cool drip of water on our bodies to bring us closer to you so that we might live as your people with justice, kindness, and humility. We remember your promises to us. Renew in us a heart of compassion 
for others, others and help, help us recognize, recognize your, your presence in all who we meet. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite you to push pause and wash your hands as you remember your baptism. When your household is ready, you can go ahead and push play again to continue. For now, we prepare as we wash and as we clean. Our worship continues with the blessing of our meal. On the night that Jesus gathered with his friends, he took bread 
and he blessed it and shared it with his friends. For God who loves us, feeds us. As God's people ate manna in the wilderness and were satisfied, so we share this bread with Christ and with one another. May it be for us bread from heaven, strength for our bodies, balm for our souls, and may it empower us to be Christ's body in this world. Please push pause to pass the bread around the table for all to take their fill. And when you are ready, push play again and continue our blessing. Welcome back. Now we focus on our drink that we'll be sharing with one another. On the night that Jesus gathered with his friends, he took wine and he blessed it and he shared it with them. For the God who made us delights in us and gives us good gifts to delight our tongues and gives joy to our souls. As Jesus offered the Samaritan woman water that will not fail, so Jesus quenches our thirst the same. May this drink be for us the holy drink of heaven, and may it wash us of sin and quench the thirst of our souls. Please push pause at this time. Go around and pass their, your drink around the table so that all are able to get their fill. You may also join us in singing.
please join together using the prayer you see on your screen. Holy God, you nourish, you nourish us, us through, through this meal. meal. Leave, Leave us hungry for your, your kingdom. kingdom. Leave us thirsty for the justice that you pour out on the world. world. Let, Let us encounter the bodies around us. Let us see you in the faces of strangers and friends. Taste you in the sourness of grapes. Hear you in the creaks of our homes and the whisper of the breeze. Through this meal of love, teach us how to be for others as you are for us, sustaining help, loving accompaniment, and eternal hope. At this time, we invite you to begin eating your meal before we begin with our readings and reflections for the night. In just a few moments, we will push pause. Then, once everyone has food on their plates, push play. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. Little children, I'm only with you a little longer. You'll look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our meal tonight is centered on God's love that is present in filling our cups to the brim. As you eat your meal tonight, we encourage your table to engage in reflection and discussion on where you have experienced God's love in your life. Once the prompts come up on your screen, go ahead and push pause to discuss. Push play again once you are finished, and there may be more slides after. But for now, enjoy your meal and enjoy your discussion.
Our dinner is over. The waiting begins. Jesus chose to use his final hours to establish intimate and profound physical connections with his friends. In the midst of this connection, he offered a new commandment to love others as he loves us. This is not an abstract or sentimental love. This is bread-breaking, food-washing, messy love. We have remembered our baptism. We have been nourished at this table. And now we go out into the world to live out Jesus' commandment as we leave this place. May the presence of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier fill the nooks and crannies of our lives. You are invited to clear away the dishes and clean up the remains of your meal in silence and with prayer. Tonight, this table was our altar and this place our sanctuary. As you clear the table, dim the lights where you are. Leave your Christ light lit as you listen to the reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, 
you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then the bulls will be offered on your altar. <laughs> 